everyone, I'm Ashley Harwood, and in this video, I will be making this sweet little baby rattle. So let's get started. Before we do, I would like to ask that if you enjoy this video, please hit subscribe and don't forget the little notifications bell so that you don't miss any of the future videos. All right, let's go. The first step is choosing which woods to use in the rattle. I like to keep things symmetrical with the color pattern, and I like to choose woods with enough contrasting color to make a visual impact. For these rattles, I've decided on ash, walnut, and teak. And these all need to be milled so that they're perfectly flat for the glue up. Here's the first layout of my pattern. I think these need to be thinner, and the center one might need to be a little thinner. And we're back to the planer to shape just a little bit off. I need to create a template or a story stick as we call it. First I mark the length of my blank on the story stick. Then I sketch out my rattle and mark out the important parts, namely where the holes will be on the inside of the rattle and where the ends of each rattle blank will be, leaving room for a tenon on each one of course. Then I replicate the marks from my sketch on the story stick and I transfer the marks from the story stick onto the center piece of this blank. That shows me where to drill the holes. I find it's much easier during the glue up if the holes don't go quite all the way through. Everything needs to be centered as well. I need to make sure that when I mount this piece on the lathe, the holes are at the center inside of the blank. Now it's assembly time. Just a few beads in each hole and glue and stack each of the pieces, making sure not to have too much glue dripping into the holes that can make the beads stick together.
After trimming the blank to the length on the bandsaw, I mark the blank and mount it between centers. After roughing it almost round, I'm creating the tenons for each rattle on this blank. Then they get cut apart on the bandsaw. And finally, we are turning a rattle. I use calipers to keep the diameter consistent for both ends of the rattle. I refer back to my drawing to mark out where the holes are on the blank so that I can make sure not to cut into them while I'm turning. It's just a couple of beads and a cove blended into each other. If you're interested in learning the techniques to make these cuts, check out the links below this video for my spindle turning tutorials. I use the vortex tool to part it off the lathe once it's sanded. Works. All right, now we just gotta get the little nub off. Pat, my videographer, asked if I would use a sanding pad held in the headstock like I've done on some other projects. This is easier than my usual method, so we gave it a try. But the easier way didn't work out as well in this case. About the only thing I use this particular chuck for is this. 
I've got rubber tubing over these pin jaws and they make for a nice firm but not damaging grip to sand the very end of these rattles. I like to finish these simply with Mahoney's Walnut Oil, and we have a link below the video for that too. Ta-da! Thanks for watching everybody. I hope y'all enjoyed that. Don't forget that there are all kinds of links down below this video, um, including we do have some Amazon affiliate links. I will say thank you in advance because a small portion of those goes to helping us continue to create these videos. So thank you. I hope everybody is having a safe and happy new year. Cheers. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, I do hope that you'll hit subscribe and don't forget to also hit that little notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Also, don't forget that all of the links are down below. So if you're interested in any of the tools that we're using, uh, check out the links down below this video. I would like to give a big thank you to all of my Patreon members. Uh, your support really helps us to continue to produce high quality photos and videos for all of my social media channels. Thank you so much. If you would like more of a behind the scenes look about what's going on here in my studio or in my classroom or with whatever project I might be working on, head on over to my Patreon page. Also at the $10 level, uh, those patrons will receive advance notice of when I'm going to be scheduling my classes. So if you want to make sure that you can get into my next class spots that open up, uh, check out the Patreon page. Again, the links are down below. And lastly, I would like to give a big shout out to my top tier patrons, Andrew Nidal, Carrie Carpenter, Chris Cairns, Dr. David Matheson, Erica Vane, George Zelznak, Jim Tate, Chris Jones, Mark Glonick, Robert Hunt, and Steve Snyder. Thank you so much. Well, that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time. Everybody stay safe.